continue to honor women in entertainment this Women's Month. Our next guest is no stranger to the AIM report or to our screens or our stage. She's considered the queen of comedy as she's created her own lane in a male-dominated comedy industry. Today, Celeste Ntuli joins us to tell us about her latest project, which is a tribute to her childhood icon. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Lovely to see you. It's Women's Month and it's also your birthday month. Yes. I always celebrate this month, so like I feel like I feel special. I feel like it's my whole month. <laughs> Do you feel like a weekend special because oh, yeah. uh, Brenda Fassi is the childhood icon that we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, you know how comedians we always do the lineup of comedians, and sometimes most comedians are like so and so and friends. And I was with my friend Isaac. I'm like. But Isaac said, Celeste, but you always play with the big guys, with mm. the big dudes. Maybe you should do Celeste. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, and it, I've been toying with the idea for years. And then I was like, okay, finally, after doing one-man shows by mm. myself all the time, this time I'm hosting a lineup of great comedians. The reason why it's Celeste and a big dude is because obviously I'm paying homage, but the guys that are on lineup, they're real big dudes. Mm. You know, they've been doing this for years. And some of them, they've been doing it before me. Um, and they're headliners by their own right. So... I just wanted to find a nice way to, and, and I thought, this is beautiful for the first one. Let me just pay a nice homage. If you see the post, it looks like Brenda Fuss's first album. Yeah. yeah <laughs> the yeah. weekend special. Yes. But this one is a birthday <laughs> special. Yeah. And I had to get that code made because there's no size. <laughs> but I wanted it to look exactly like that. So, and also when I now zoned in on it and understood what Brenda did for the entertainment mm. space as a woman and... She shifted so many things and, you know, changed and she was on the edge and, and, and for a black woman at that time to be that iconic and a superstar, she was a real queen bee before yeah. queen bee, yeah. you know, for us. Yes. And, and, and at that time there was no social media, but this person was filling stadiums and she was dope. I think, I think we need to celebrate her. Like even more than what we, we yeah. give her. Like, you know, those Elvis Presley celebrations? Mm -hmm. I wish South Africa had those things. I'm, I'm glad that she has a statue somewhere downtown. And I, I was lucky enough to meet her in my life. Really? Yeah, and I spent a weekend with her, partying with her. Wow. I know, it's crazy. And that will stay off the record. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> with, with, with a group of friends, of course, but, you know, we rode in her car. Yeah. And, and, and that time, obviously, she was, Brenda Fassett was like 2001. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she was much more, you know, alive even. I remember we were in Yeovil and, and she started singing. You know those guys that sing and, and mm. you put money in them? Yes. She went and backed the guy oh. and asked for us to put them more money. Now she gave free concert in the middle of Yeovil. I'm like, this woman is amazing. And I think subconsciously wow. how I navigated and moved through yeah. the space there's a lot that I took from her. That changes everything, right? The fact that you met her, not only met her, the fact that you spent quality time with her, that yeah. adds a new dimension to yeah. you paying tribute to her in this way. Yeah, yeah. I've, I, because I've, I've, I was lucky enough to know her this way. Like, wow. I, I, also, it was a friend of a friend. You know those things. Mm. And then you end up you're in the space with her. Um, not that she knew me like that, but I was lucky to have yeah. that understanding of who she was because mm. we went to the jazz joint that was there. There's a guy that used to have a jazz um, house there in Yeovil somewhere. It's, it's a long time, but I was young. Mm. I, but the fact that I, she was in my vicinity, it was enough what a pleasure. to be inspired. What an honor. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It was enough to be inspired. You know, I, I started the, the conversation with you by saying that this is ordinarily a male-dominated industry. But I wonder, is that still true, given that we have so many incredible I mean, women artists? Let me be honest. I'm, I think this whole thing... All the nicer things in life, they, they were deemed male, <laughs> yeah, dominated, yeah, yeah. if you think about it properly. I don't think it was just male dominated because women didn't think they have a space. Because remember, comedy started in bars and in dingy spaces and, you know, clubs, mm. not even posh clubs. Now, it, as it evolved, it became better that we can go and perform at the theaters, yeah. casinos. So even now, as comedy as a, as a, as a space... Is not deemed as something that is much more feminine. Because, I mean, who wants a woman that talks too much? But there's nothing that is gender anything with this sport. Right. Because we're not picking up stuff. We're not even, it's not even physical sports. It's a mental capacity of yeah. understanding and, and how you think and mm. how you view the world. So that's got nothing to do with gender, really. Yeah. Um, so as much as it used to be, it used to be male, it used to be more white. But now... It's everything. Mm. And we even have people from LGBT community. Last week, I was performing in another club and I met 
this woman who's Celeste. She's a lesbian woman who's Celeste and she's performing and she's doing her own performance in her own right and understanding of her own life, mm. you know, and yeah. I was like, this is good. Because and bringing her own experience. Honestly, to this, yeah. and it's good because most comedians are starting to be, you know, cut off because you said this, this is homophobic, but sometimes a joke is a joke, but if it's said by someone from the community, yeah. Then we are all safe. You, you know, that, that brings up a nice question about, you know, in a South African context, because comedy is a lot about how you view the world, right? Mm. It, it draws on the experiences of yourself, of your country, your surroundings, your friends. In a context like South Africa, is mm. there anything for you that's off limits? I don't think so. We are not off limits as a country. I think. <laughs> if it's so, I don't think. Well, you can take a. I feel like. Um, we have come to a point as a generation where a difference of an opinion most of the time is taken as hate. Mm. It's a difference of opinion. I'm not saying your opinion doesn't matter, but I'm just saying my opinion is this one. Or maybe I see this thing in a different way. Yeah. So a joke is much more nicer. If you're going to play on the edge, understand to remember that the humor is your um, point of contact with the audience. And like, it's, it's sort of if it's shield. not funny, then it's, then it's not a problem. Then it's, yeah. yeah. I mean, is it, are good comedians, would you say, always skirting that edge? Are they really close to that edge of, oof, that's uncomfortable, but it's funny? Because the, that's where the funny is. Yeah. I've yeah. made jokes in, in funerals. I've made jokes at my brother's funeral. Wow. And, and, and it's not something that I was deliberate to say, okay, I'm going to make, no. Have his friends were there. And then they were feeling so bad and down, da da da, because he was such a he was such a life of a party. Yeah. And I found myself making all his friends laughing yeah. after the funeral. Yeah. And my mom came to come. I was like, "What's going on?" Because people were killing themselves. And I was not even telling my jokes. I was telling stuff that he was doing, mm. things mm. that you know I picked up about him. And I feel like everyone else after the funeral were calling me like, "Thank you. That was yeah. nice." Because and actually it was a celebration of his life. Because sometimes I think we, that's the thing. We take it too so seriously. It's, it, all I'm saying is. A person can go to the edge, but the joke must remain. Humor, punchline mm. must be there. Mm. If there's no punchline, then, yeah, you deserve to be consulted. Yeah. We didn't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> we have to laugh, and then it's like, okay, well, we can give you the... You see what happened with yeah. Chris Rock? Everyone's like, but Chris, Will Smith's laugh first. Yeah. He yeah. laughed first, which means the joke landed. Yeah. Controversial, but the joke landed. So we, we've had Brenda and the big dudes. Mm -hmm. Now we've got Celeste and Tuli and, and the big, big dudes. dudes. Yes. See. Tell, tell your audience what they can expect, where they can watch you. They can watch it at Emperor's Palace on the 25th of August on my exact birthday. Yeah. So that's why I call it birthday special. And the lineup is hilarious. When I say hilarious, hilarious. These yeah. people that are on the lineup, they make me laugh. These people on the left, they, they can be their own headliners. They've done their own shows, some of them. And people can expect a beautiful antidote of music element that I put into the show. Um, some of the people that have attended my shows will know. I, have, I, I sometimes have a band. This one show, I had Lebo Mashile opening ah. for me. I love to make my comedy shows to feel like a show. Yeah. Not to just like, full you know, I package. give you the full thing. So they must be ready to laugh enjoy, dance, interact, reminisce, have a lovely memory uh, back to where we grew up and mm. how we grew up. Um, so, and, and also a lot of stories that people didn't know about me that I've never said, like I've told you now, that I was with Brenda Fry, after the weekend with Brenda Fry. So it's like there are things in that area that reminded me of how I was navigating, how I came to Joburg, why I came to jo I came with my friend who was so crazy. And we, we just got everything wrong. I had to go back home. So, <laughs> you see, it was all those things. They must, uh, people must just expect a show that is not like your ordinary comedy yeah. show. And it's an uh, opportunity, it sounds, to get to know you better. Oh, well. yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they're going to get to know me better. She's known as the Queen of Comedy, Celeste and Tuli, here in studio with us to talk about her new show, Celeste and Tuli and Big Dudes, 25th of August, yes. on her birthday at Empress Palace. If and you Ticket, ticket so, Pro, yeah. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and get your tickets.